Hey everyone, in the first video, I talked about features you should look out for in a pen display before you buy one. Now in this second video, I'm going to show you how to use a pen display. Now this video is for beginners who just bought a pen display and also for people who don't know what a pen display is and want to find out how it actually works. In this video, I'm going to assume you have no knowledge what a pen display is or you are very new to pen displays. So I'm going to show you how to set up a pen display so that you can work productively with one, how you can configure the driver, how you can configure the buttons and how you can draw on the pen display with various drawing software. A pen display is essentially a monitor so you have to connect this to a computer and a power source in order to use it. So I've just connected this to my laptop where the USB port is able to provide enough power to power this pen display. So currently this display is showing the same content as that because it's in mirror mode. If you are using dual displays, uh, it doesn't make sense for you to show the same content on both displays. So now I'm going to use extended monitor mode. Let me go into the Windows settings, extend these displays. So now these two displays are showing different content and I can actually drag this window here to the left side to put it onto the pen display. Now, um, if you have your laptop on this side, you have to drag your laptop screen to the other side to match what you have on your table. So let me just put this here because my laptop is on the left. If you have dual screen, you can actually put your reference photo on one display and you can open your drawing software on this display and draw while you have the reference on the side. Make sure you install the driver first, otherwise the cursor may not follow the pen tip. So the first thing I like to do is to configure the pressure sensitivity. With this driver, I'm actually able to move the dots here to adjust the curve. With certain drivers, you can use the slider to adjust the curve. So I like this curve because when I am drawing with very light pressure, the lines will be thinner than usual. I also want to configure the two side buttons. I want to have one button to switch the cursor from this display to the other display. So I'm going to do that uh, here. So I'm going to have this switch function and switch screen. Click OK and apply. And now when I click the side button here, I can move the cursor across both displays or I can have the cursor only on that display. You may not be able to see the cursor, but let me just drag this window around to show you. So this is very convenient because when you are working, um, you don't want your pen to only work on this display because sometimes you want the cursor to move there to drag things over or to click on things over there. Next thing I want to do is to set the shortcut buttons. By the way, I have already set the mouse right click to this button. So to set the shortcut buttons, simply just select the buttons and assign a specific keyboard shortcut to those buttons. So the first button here is brush. Let me select the second button here. This is to change the brush size. If your pen display doesn't have any physical shortcut buttons on the side, doesn't matter because you can always use your keyboard for keyboard shortcuts. Now, if you are a left-handed user, um, you need to rotate the orientation of the pen display. You have to change the orientation here with the driver. Then you have to go into Windows or Mac OS settings to change the display orientation. Here it's called landscape flipped. This will turn the image upside down and the pen display driver will make sure that the cursor is tracking beneath the pen tip. If for some reason you find that the cursor is not tracking directly beneath the pen tip, then you may need to calibrate your monitor. Just click monitor calibration and click on the crosshair to calibrate the cursor. 
Another thing you may want to do is to change the brightness and contrast of the pen display if the colors are not looking right. So with this particular driver, you can actually adjust the brightness, contrast, the color settings um, here. With certain pen displays, there are dedicated buttons for you to assess the OSD menu to change the brightness, contrast, and color temperature. Okay, so after you're done, configuring the driver just click apply and we can start drawing for this tutorial we will be using midibank paint pro which is a free drawing software that's available on mac and windows let's launch midibank paint pro let's just close everything okay let's create a new canvas go to file and create new I'm going to pick one of the default paper sizes here, A4. Make sure that the width is the one that is wider. If not, just click reverse width and make sure the color is white. So now we have the blank canvas. Let's select a brush. I'm going to select this pen. Now, if this palette is not located here, go into the menu window, click brush. Now to change brush size, you can use the shortcuts that you have already assigned or you can use the keyboard. The shortcut to change brush sizes would be this angle bracket, this one and this one. So now the brush is very thin. I want to increase the brush size by just um, using this button here on the left side. You can see the brush size increase. So just test your pen and see what kind of lines you can create. Draw with very light pressure to see how thin you can create those lines and press down hard to see how thick those lines can be. To delete all this, you can use this keyboard shortcut, Ctrl A to select all and Ctrl X to cut or to delete everything on the canvas. You can also change the brush size here by dragging the slider. Again, just practice with your pen. Basically what you want to do is to use your pen, your pen display so often that it feels like second nature to you. By the way, if you see some dotted lines here, it means there is actually a selection. You can go to the menu, select and deselect to remove those dotted lines or use the keyboard shortcut Control d let's draw something simple let's draw a pair of shoes so i've just selected this black color i've picked a brush here and let's draw don't worry about your result practice as much as you can draw with very light pressure or draw with heavy pressure to see how the lines will react with pressure sensitivity if you need to change the brush size you can use the shortcut buttons on the left side provided you have assigned those uh, shortcuts or you can just use your keyboard shortcuts here the square brackets to change the brush size now to move around the canvas, just press the space bar and move around. And to zoom in and out, you just have to press control space bar. A magnifying glass will appear on screen if your pen tip is close to the display and just move up and down to change the zoom. So I'm just going to draw this really quickly. To undo, you just have to press control Z so that's the beauty with digital art. You can undo very easily. One thing I highly recommend you to do is to uh, look at all the menus here and try and remember the keyboard shortcuts that you see because using keyboard shortcuts is going to improve your productivity significantly. And also try and um, see what are the tools available from the toolbars, what you can change or select using the palettes that are all around the software. Okay, so just get a hang of um, 
drawing so just draw as much as you can try to get comfortable using the pen display now if you are not able to follow along with my instructions you cannot remember the shortcuts um, doesn't really matter what i'm trying to show you is um, what you can actually do with this software so now that you know what's possible you can then go on and learn that yourself at your own time so now i'm going to add color to this shoe this canvas shoe i'm going to create a new layer i usually draw with the line art on its own layer and color on a separate layer so here i'm going to uh, select this layer and choose a different color let's choose green and click on the fill bucket tool here and just click here to fill the areas oops now to be able to use the fill bucket tool all these areas here they must be enclosed now if there are any openings the fill bucket tool will not work correctly so this is a very quick way to add colors i want to add maybe some gray here so select a gray and click here and i want this green to color this part so to change color very quickly using the same colors that are available on display just press and hold alternate on your keyboard an eyedropper will appear click on the color you want and then the color here will update and you can use that color it's very simple some small areas are difficult to fill so zoom in and fill now um, in this case i want to have the line art beneath the color so i will drag this color layer beneath the line art always save regularly Control s to save and let me just save this file here titled shoe i am going to create another layer um, a shadow layer so that i can paint some shadows over the shoe so i'm going to create a layer and place that layer above the shoe and i'm going to select gray a mid gray let me just control space bar to zoom in and i'm going to oops make sure i'm using the brush b to select the brush notice that this gray it's gray this area here in the shadow it should be dark green but here it's actually gray so to make this dark green i can go into the shadow layer here select the blending mode and select multiply so now you can see the gray color it's still gray here it's multiplied on top of the green so this is a really quick way to add shadows to your shoe and if for some reason you want to make this shoe a different color you can just click on this button here to turn off the color here create a new layer with a different color let me add some shadows here maybe some texture here and maybe here a little texture here maybe this shoe is kind of worn it has some uh, texture here and there so just play around and see what the software can do i mean for a free software like this it's actually quite versatile so i'm going to draw some um, white uh, thread lines here i'm going to select the color layer now when you're drawing make sure you always draw on the correct layer so here i can draw this white thread lines and maybe here as well I really enjoy using Medibank Paint Pro because there are a lot of wonderful drawing features and this app is free. And this app usually works well with pen display so it's really enjoyable to be creating art to be drawn digitally with this app. All right, so this is basically what you can do with a pen display. So just go draw, go practice as often as you can. Your first few drawings, um, they are not going to be that good because um, sometimes you can tell by how your lines look. When drawing straight lines, um, for beginners, sometimes you can see the line it may wobble or sometimes the lines, um, they may have inconsistent thickness. But 
with practice, you will be able to draw straighter lines, you will be able to draw smoother lines, and more confident looking lines. I hope this video is helpful. If you guys have any questions, let me know in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. See you again. Bye.